Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. We're in our final stretch of the day. Um, a lot of great talks. We're going to get into some of the te technical details now and roadmaps of our products. Uh, I'm going to start off with a quick overview of our Committee on Technology. And then um, closely related to that is our Dell project. Um, after I do the overview, Jeff Klan and Mike Mendes will um, go into more details of this, followed by our product roadmaps. So the ITB to Transmart Foundation has many different components of it that we call that's sort of under our umbrella. We started out 15 years ago with ITB2, which provides core services related to a common data model application later and APIs. Um, a number of years later, Transmart branched out from that and created a suite of data exploration, visualization, and ETL tools. And then there have been a lot of other programs over the years that have been developed um, that extend the functionality of these um, two platforms, including um, different uh, user interfaces and query tools for ITB2 and Transmart, uh, eight different APIs. The picture API has been uh, quite successful, uh, and federated query tools like Shrine. There are also various libraries that are compatible with ITB2 and Transmart, various ontologies, um, like the ACT ontology, ARCH from a number of years ago, uh, data sets that people have generated to load into ITB2 and Transmart, as well as various ETL processes. And this is just sort of the first uh, path of this. There are a lot of plugins and workflows and other customizations that different institutions have built. Unfortunately, over the years, because it's an open source product, People can kind of take the programs, do what they want with it, and it's difficult for us to track what's going on, and we lose some of the interoperability between these different programs. A few years ago, we uh, launched the Committee on Technology and tried to make a foundation-wide effort to bring these things back together. Um, the goal of this committee is to create an inventory of foundation products, the software plugins, ETL processes, and so on. As I mentioned, this is harder than it sounds, because we don't really know what each institution has developed internally. A lot of groups will create something and uh, they never really think about make, putting an open source license on it and releasing it back. So we may not know what's, uh, what, what different extensions have been made to these platforms and not everyone um, even thinks about sharing with us. Uh, we wanna understand what products are compatible with each other, what dependencies exist and what common ontologies are used. What versions of ITB2 and Transmart work together? Which ones work with Shrine? Which ontologies are needed to support different kinds of functionality? Uh, we want to address technology issues that might affect multiple products, such as if we're going to make changes to the data models, we need to make sure all the product owners are aware of these changes. We want to look at single sign-on authentication, common security and deployment approaches across our programs. Then we want to look at ways of bundling compatible products. So it can be really difficult for a new institution that really hasn't heard about us before, hasn't been following very closely, to know what sets of tools and, and plugins and libraries they need to bundle together or install together in order to address a particular use case, like clinical trial recruitment or genomic studies or any, any other kind of use case. Where do you go with all those different pieces that are out there? So these are ongoing problems we're trying to solve. Um, you're welcome to join our group. Anyone can join, but the, the real focus are the software developers uh, kind of working together to figure out some of these technical details. This isn't the right place to go if you want to learn, just learn more about our products. There are other, um, uh, other meetings like our monthly some, uh, public symposiums and others where we do some of that, uh, those types of activities. Um, part of our committee on technology is trying to move towards the vision of the future. Um, with ITB2 and Transmart, we've sort of figured out how you query EHR data and, um, uh, and put together different kinds of data from different sources. But this is just the raw data. What you really want to be able to do is take that raw data, which can be biased, incomplete, poor quality, and turn it into something that can actually be useful for research. So something tells you what's the truth about those patients. Provision is being able to develop these technologies and methods needed to extract the truth from clinical data. And this can take a variety of forms, such as taking coded data and turning those into actual phenotypes, developing disease severity measures to understand how, um, how a disease has progressed over time. We've looked a little bit about this earlier with COVID. Genomic risk scores, tools for assessing data quality, 
natural language processing to extract concepts from notes, and most importantly, explainable AI and ML, not just plugging the data into some model and it comes out with some black box kind of random number out of it, but something that's been developed with uh, clinicians in mind where the inputs and outputs make sense that it can be actually be used for clinical decision support and, um, and treating patients. So it's, it's a big vision. Um, we're kind of taking this in steps. Our first year's focus really on bundles, and this was supported by um, uh, Dell Giving Funds over this past year. Uh, where our goal was to create, uh, was to combine foundation-related tools, ontologies, and data into integrated products. So rather than that first slide, which is a whole bunch of random things out there, we really want to think about this as one big platform that institutions can use to implement the pipeline going from raw EHR data to actual um, validated AI and machine learning models that can be used for clinical care. Uh, it's not just picking products and sticking them together. They have to be well documented, and we often forget about this. Um, even when an individual component of this pipeline or, or, or bundle creates good documentation for that individual component, often what's missing is the overall documentation. What is this overall thing we're putting together? How do all these pieces fit? How does the site kind of customize it for their researchers? So we want to be able to, in this documentation, explain the use cases for software bundles, have architecture diagrams, and have example publications even that show what researchers are able to do when all these tools fit together. Um, the bundles contain all the system requirements that are needed in, uh, for all the programs in one place. Instead of having to go to IQB2's website and figure out what you need for that, then going to Transmart and going to Shrine and figuring out what, you know, really what do you need for all this. In one place, you can figure out what servers, what hardware, what firewalls you're going to need to implement this package. And then step-by-step -step install instructions with uh, consolidated configuration options. So again, this is all about simplifying the process of picking all these components together and making it uh, useful. So the two bundles we started out with are a population-wide analysis bundle. Um, this links together ICB2s at different hospitals uh, with the Shrine Federated Query software, the common ontology that was developed for the ACT network, along with extensions the Pittsburgh team made for um, the COVID ontology, and a brand new user interface that was developed over the past year for Shrine. Uh, led by um, kind of Paul Mar Maram on design. We'll talk about that tomorrow at the user interface group and um, a really great programming um, group within Harvard Catalyst. So what this allows us to do in the population-wide analysis bundle is to be able to query um, dozens of institutions. Um, the, the ACT network across the United States has over 100 million patients in it. You can uh, get a sense of which hospitals have the kind of data that you need, feasibility for clinical trials, um, we use it a lot in COVID in order to understand uh, what variables are present at institutions to help us develop things like our severity algorithms. The data science genomic bundle, um, that brings together the ITB2 core along with the ITB2 um, website, so the front end of it, as well as Transmart for analysis tools and being able to integrate EHR data and uh, genomic data as well. So uh, an, an important piece to bringing these products together into bundles is having a common data model. Um, so we mentioned earlier today that ITB2 and Transmart have now moved to a common ITB2 1.7.12 common data model based on the star schema, or the observation fact table, and several dimension tables. Um, this is needed for interoperability between ITB2 Transmart and the extensions that people have built. Um, and like I mentioned before, it's not just a matter of coming up with some software or here, in this case, a data model. It's really make sure you have the right documentation and instructions for people on how to use it. Um, part of the reason why ITB2 and Transmart deviated over, uh, uh, over the years is because, um, because of the lack of it. Different ITB2 instances would use fields in the data model in one way. And Transmart would do it in a different way, it would add on different uh, additional fields to these data tables, and then all of a sudden they think that platforms aren't interoperable anymore. So a key part of this, um, again, through the Dell project, is developing a common data model documentation guide that not only lists the core tables, fields, keys, indexes, constraints, but also provides detailed descriptions of how you should use this 
It gives examples on how this will integrate with the ontology. And really a lot of just examples of how you would use common data model for different kinds of data. Everything from the standard ITB2 clinical data, EHR and claims data, but things like transmark clinical trials, genomics data, notes, and imaging. Um, also how to extend the core data model. Our, our product um, encourages people to be able to customize the platforms for their needs, but this is sort of a best practice way of doing that so that your, uh, your customizations will remain compatible with future releases as opposed to um, doing things that might break things in the future. And Jeff will show um, uh, uh, exactly where this stuff sits on our wiki and like, walk through some of the pages there to show you an example of what it looks like. Griffin, there was a question from Kavi yeah. about um, how can one contribute to the Committee on Technology? Yeah, so there's, um, I think there's a sign up um, on the um, ITB2 Transmark Foundation website. And through, the, just, through the working I'm wrong groups? About, yes, I think yeah. it's on, one for the technology, Committee on Technology as well. If there isn't, then I think you can email Diane and um, she can get you connected to it. I've put a link to the form in the uh, chat box, Kavi. Perfect, thank you. The bundles, uh, the, the key component of a bundle is again, the documentation. Um, each bundle has th these sets of things in the documentation. It has the, the use case. So why would you wanna use this bundle? What problem does it solve for institutions by installing the set of components? It lists the actual components that are part of the bundle. Uh, we try to have a public demo of each of these bundles using synthetic data set. And, and Mike Mendes and Jeff Klein have been really key to this in setting up um, these uh, public demos. And they'll show you some demos of that in a bit. Um, technical architecture diagrams are important. Um, once you start adding on I2B2, Transmark, Shrine, other pieces, it becomes really complicated how all these things fit together. So we've drawn out pictures of what ITB2 looks like, how these components fit into the Shrine architecture, as well as different ways you can configure a Shrine network depending on um, uh, kind of hospital policies or the, whether or not you want to centralize pieces or, or have them all located um, in a federated way across different sites. We have combined system requirements, as I mentioned before, so a single page where it shows you all the different types of servers, or RAM, hardware needs for um, different instances of these and um, an overview and links to the various install guides. These bundles don't contain everything. It's not a copy of the software code. It's not a copy of the individual product documentation. It kind of tells you the missing parts of the documentation that you need to understand in order to link these things together. But then it will link you to you know, the specific chapters of the individual product documentations on um, how to actually install and configure those tools. Again, we'll show you a little bit of this in a bit. So next steps, we're now into our second year of our Dell project. Um, and we're continuing our work on the common data model and our two bundles. On the common data model, our goal is ultimately to have integration of multimodal data to create a complete view of a patient. And um, you know, Sean talked to you a little bit about this earlier on our um, in the Recover Consortium about how for looking at long COVID, we're trying to pull together lots of different kinds of information about patients, survey data, wearables, EHR, imaging, you need to merge all this stuff together and link it to be able to com create this complete view of a patient. And the ITV to common data model is what merges all those different data into a, um, into a single source of um, information about the patient that you can build analyses on top of. So we want to develop some best practices for modeling genomic and clinical trial data in this data model, extending the documentation to some additional tables that are in our products. Um, that will improve compatibility between things like ITB2 and Transmart. Uh, extend the documentation describing how the ontology works with the data model. ITB2 is very flexible because it's just that single observation fact table, um, but uh, you really have to understand how the ontology works with it and have best practices for that ontology so that different um, uh, applications are using it in a consistent way where the, their data will be compatible. We want to allow the ITB2 concept tree for studies within Transmard. Um, the, uh, this will, again, allow cohorts between ITB2 and Transmard to be more easily shared. 
And the population-wide analysis bundle, the goal of that is, again, to create real-time access to data on millions of patients. We want to imp implement single sign-on between ITB2 transmodern shrines to make it easy to flip back and forth between your local queries and analyses in ITB2 and transmart, and then moving those out to federated queries across a large networking shrine, and then taking what you've sort of found in a shrine network and going back into your local EHRs and, and confirming that. And right now, you have to do those in separate products. We want to be able to streamline uh, initially the login and then later on the user interfaces. So it looks like one, um, a one consolidated platform. And then evaluating alternative approaches to defining patient cohorts. Um, this is really important. And 4C, um, we had to do things like just figuring out who are our COVID patients, which ones do we count as severe patients, which were admitted patients. A lot of these things involve derived concepts, extracting concepts from those. In the end, you get a list of patients. And how do you, how do you store those and how do you use it? Is it concepts that get added to a fact table? Is it additional columns you add to your patient dimension? Is it leveraging things like workflow and the workspace tools inside of ITB2 that a lot of us haven't used that much previously? So it's looking at these different approaches um, with all of our teams together and figuring out what's the best way of implementing this so that we can have this pipeline again where we're taking sets of patients and passing them from um, one institution into the federated networks and then merging them with genomic and other types of data to ultimately do analysis on that. And finally, the data science genomics bundle is looking at doing complex analyses based on real world data. We want to be able to improve the interoperability in between ITB2 and Transmart and the common data model, again, to make it a more seamless environment for the researchers as opposed to right now where um, there are multiple products running on the same data model, but they look and feel like different things. So we want to um, help make that easier for our investigators. And finally, once, um, as we kind of talked about before, it's important to be able to take the data out of ITB2, pivot it into a um, format that makes it more easier for um, machine learning models and other kind of analyses and store that on secure enclaves. So with that, I will, I will stop here. And um, I think Jeff is up next. Let's see, he's here. Yeah. 